Hi everyone, in this week's video I'll be showing you how you can work with beams and shells in the same model, how you can combine these to create columns for a slab, as well as in the second model, ribs for a floor slab. So let's jump into the first model. Here I've just created a surface which measures 20 by 20 meters. It has been moved up in the vertical axis and this is going to be my floor slab and I'm using the divide surface component to basically uh, divide the surface for creating my columns which are my lines here. As mentioned in a previous video if we want to make sure that Crumba recognizes that these columns are actually integrated into the shell we have to make sure that the endpoints of these columns are actually inside the mesh geometry. When I use the mesh BREPS component, you'll see that I can look at my mesh faces or the mesh edges. And what will be very important is that the endpoints of my columns are actually also the mesh vertices. So to do this, I should make sure that my endpoints of my columns are included as input points for the mesh BREPS. And now you see that the mesh has adapted to this and now I can create my floor slab by using the mesh to shell component and applying a cross section with a cross section thickness here. My columns are created using the line to beam component. Here I've created a simple solid cross section with a concrete material. I've also defined my supports which are my original support points here, my, sorry, my points from my divide surface. And I've got my loads. So the load is actually coming from the same input mesh as my shell. And I've defined a vector, basically a force of three kilonewtons per square meter. And I've set the orientation to global and the generation of forces to point loads. And next, all of these elements are assembled into the assemble model component, my shell and my beam elements, my supports, as well as my loads. I need to make sure that these are all flattened in the assemble model component so that Chroma doesn't make multiple models. And next, we're going to simply analyze it to get the results and preview the model in the model view with the beam view and the shell view. And once I activate the preview of these, you'll see that my model has now been calculated. I can get the results of my deformation, I can get the display scales and basically move my deformation. At the moment, my deformation is quite low, so I can actually set this value higher. and then we can actually see more exaggerated results in the deformation too. And I'm able to change the column sizes to preview the different results of my analysis. If I set the columns back to 50 and I change the count of my divide surface, you'll see that the column positions adapt as well as the results of my floor slabs as follows. And now you can make sure that your columns are always integrated into your mesh or your shell geometries. Next, I'm going to show you how you can create some ribs or downstanding beams on your slabs. Here, I've created some polylines which are basically connecting my points on the slab that I created. If I was to directly apply this to a line to beam and add it to my model, and we have a look at our results, on the first preview, it looks okay, but if I increase the deformation, you'll see that my beams do not actually deform as though they were performing as ribs of these slabs. 
And this is because we have to make sure that the ribs are integrated also into our mesh geometry. So that means we should divide these ribs into segments and these endpoints should be also integrated into our mesh. So let's do this right now. So what I've done is I'm simply exploding these polylines into separate segments. We're extracting the length and using a slider value, which I can also plug into my mesh resolution later on, I'm dividing these polylines or lines into separate segments, as you can see here. And these points should be now added into our mesh inclusion points. So into here as the input points there. Now, if I plug the rebuilt polylines of these elements into my line to beam, you'll see that now my beams deform as though there were actually ribs on this slab. The last thing I've done is also apply an eccentricity on this cross section. So I have a height of my rib of 80 centimeters, and I've taken also the floor slab thickness, which is the slider here. These values are both divided by 2, and then I subtract the divided value of this floor slab from the height of my beam, and then I apply a negative multiplier and this is going to be applied in the z direction vector and I'm inputting this as a eccentricity logic into my cross section and this allows me to move my cross section to basically align my the top of the rib to the top of the slab as you can see and if I now adjust the slider that controls my floor slab you see that this also adjusts in my model too. So that's it with the short video about integrating beams into shells. Thank you.